Right now I feel excited and a little nervous. Uh, right now I feel nervous but excited. Uh, really excited but also a little nervous. Right now I feel really excited, a little nervous, but it's a good nervous. Uh, excited to start Seoul. Right now I feel really excited and grateful to be a part of Seoul this year. I feel excited. I'm ready for a challenge. Yeah. Awesome. Right now I feel excited to begin Seoul. I'm a little anxious, of course, because I'm a bit uncertain of what the course entails, but obviously very excited to just begin something new. Uh, right now I feel that Seoul is going to be very fun and very like bonding with friends and just making like a stronger bond with everyone and just learning new things about myself and stuff. How am I feeling right now? I'm pretty good. I'm excited that I'm actually finally here, so... I'm really like oddly nervous. <laughs> um, but I'm also really excited. I am friends with a lot of people in the program. And, you know, being in this class together in such a collaborative way is just, it's, it's so much fun. <laughs> uh, through this program, I really hope to learn more about myself as well as more about my friends. Um, I definitely hope to step out of my comfort zone a little bit. I'm um, really excited for that and definitely just learn a lot about myself. Yeah, build friendships, just have a good time. And, I don't know, go out of my comfort zone. Um, through this program, I hope to learn things I'm passionate about and things that are different than the everyday normal school curriculum as well as like <laughs> just experience, like I said before, new things. I hope to be able to connect with others and learn some skills that I can one day use in everyday life. Uh, well, I really hope to um, become closer friends with everyone. Like, I think that's my main excitement. <laughs> Meet new people and have fun on the trips. I want to become a better version of myself and be stronger and be like, can control my brain better. Gain more confidence in myself and also step out of my comfort zone. Through this program, I hope to, you know, find out a little bit of who I want to become. I, I'm. I've had experiences where I, I'm aware of who I am and you know I've changed that perspective of myself recently but I want to know where I'm going. I hope to learn new things about myself that I can just overcome fears and stuff. Um, just be happy with who I am. I signed up for Seoul because I thought it was really interesting to get outside of the everyday norm and that Seoul like entails something more as well as that it just seems very exciting to not be stuck in the class all day. Um, I signed up for it because I wanted to prove to myself I could do it because it's not something I usually do. <laughs> um, just heard a lot of great things about it. Both my brothers did it so and they said it was like a really fun time so just thought it was gonna be really fun and just a learning opportunity. <laughs> probably for the friendships, the, the trips, but I just know in when I was thinking about it, it was just a good idea in general, so. Um, I signed up for Seoul because I want a career with the MNR when I'm older, and I was looking for some way to get experience before actually pursuing that, so I can know if it's something I really want to do. Um, Mr. Dubois came to me and said I should sign up, and I didn't think so at the start, but he came after me again, and then he presented it to my class and I thought, I really want to, I really want to sign up. This seems like fun. Um, I do a lot of canoe tripping. I plan on making it a really big part of my life. Um, and I want to earn the leadership skills able to make that in my life um, and collaborate with people. And because it's, you know, being in the wilderness is really difficult. <laughs> um, and I hope that, you know, through this journey, I can make it part of me. Uh, it looked like it was a lot of the stuff that I was interested in doing. Uh, well, part of it was, um, so my brother did Seoul, um, and he really enjoyed it, and he kind of like, was like, Liz, you should do it. And I was like, okay, why not? <laughs> but also, like, it's, uh, it's really different. I, I like the, I don't know, the feel. <laughs> well, I signed up for Seoul 
because it sounded really fun and like Mr. Dubroy talked about this, like these opportunities to grow. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, well, I heard a lot about it from people who've gone to the school before me and it just really seemed really interesting. And then I knew when I heard him talking about it in the presentation that I'd really enjoy it. I'm definitely anxious about the type of like work we're doing in the class because a lot was unsaid. And I mean, I think that's wise to keep it mysterious, but it's still a little bit nerve wracking. <laughs> um, well, I'm nervous and anxious because I'm around a bunch of people I've never met before and it's out of my comfort zone, like what you said. Nervous, probably talking a lot. I don't talk much. I think I'm nervous just because it's all new, right? And it's not going to be easy. And I'm nervous that maybe I can't do it, but I'm, I'm ready for the challenge. Just the, the trips, I'm excited for them, but I'm also a little nervous. because like, you don't know what's gonna happen, but nothing really much I'm nervous about. Just not being able to like overcome some of my fears, like just being shy and not being like who I am. Really. <laughs> I think I'm most nervous about how challenging it's going to be for me to get out of my comfort zone sometimes. I think probably like I know I'm going to be challenged and so it's like that being being challenged but it's like it's a good thing it's also just like ah. <laughs> So today's the first day with the Seoul students and I think it's super cool that there are two former Seoul grads that are actually welcoming in uh, the 10th year anniversary crew of Seoul. I couldn't be happier. It's so nice to have faith and trust in folks to be able to do uh, what they need to do with the best of intentions to provide really awesome and meaningful things for students. So I'm very excited for the year to begin. I can't wait to see uh, where things go, and, uh, and I well wish every single student much health, happiness, and love uh, throughout the semester, tons of learning, and uh, great experiences. Fix that point up, here we go. Nice and clear, big circle, doing it uh, clockwise. Clockwise. I see people doing counterclockwise. You're not doing clockwise. Clockwise and drop your head down and smaller tight circle. Now we're going counterclockwise. Oh, it makes sense. I get it. I get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I think about it. There it is. Our perspective is changing. Here we are again. Change the way you look at things, the things that you look at change. So during the first week of Seoul, we did a bunch of engaging activities that really tested all the students' communication skills and pushed them to travel outside of their comfort zones, as well as challenge them to change their perspectives. I think we could all tell right away that every single person in this group was committed to trying new things and willing to push themselves which allowed for this strong group bond to form really quickly. Every single time after successfully completing an activity together, each student was making sure to give a high five or a hug or words of praise to each other, which is just evidence of how much love and kindness there is between all of them. Um, after the first week, I definitely feel more comfortable and more open to change and I really feel like it's a really good experience and that I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. Um, I'm feeling a lot less anxious, um, definitely a lot calmer around everyone because I feel like everyone really gets along and that's a really, there's always a really positive atmosphere in the class too and that's amazing in my Uh, I feel like a part of a big family. <laughs> um, I'm feeling really good about it, I mean like everyone is already like friends with everyone already so it's good that we get to know each other really early in the year 
and be able to just be ourselves. It's just being surrounded by those amazing people is just really not only good for like us as a group, but like me in particular. <laughs> I was telling some friends of mine this. Um, it, it's it doesn't feel like school when I get up in the morning. It, it, it's, it's what I hope it, like a job would feel like, where I get up and I want to go there and I want to be around these people and I want to like do things with these people. Um, and the word family is a really, really good way to explain it. I think we've all got a really good connection with each other already and it's been a really, really fun week, so I'm feeling really good about it. Feeling really good about it. I feel like we're all equal there. So it's pretty, feels pretty good. No one's better than anyone else. We all feel like one, almost like one family. I think the activities were so fun. All of them, at, it's like camp at school. Um, I think I always try to like do my best and take away from like after we go and we talk about it. And I try my best to like use that in my own life and all that um, and I had a lot of fun and I think I learned a lot too yeah so um, a lot of the activities were really I, I would say childish but in like a fun way um, like that cowboy one like it was um, it was really like silly and, and and but all of us you know had a smile on our face and laughed at least once so we were doing it uh, and then other challenges like building the blocks uh, over the walkie-talkie, like that was very challenging and that took a long time. Uh, but every experience has something it relates to. Um, some of them were definitely challenging, but I think that it was all a really good experience and I learned a lot from all of them. Um, I know like especially the one where we had to like run at people with the zipper, that was a little scary for sure, but I'm glad I did it and I'm glad everyone's giving everything a shot. Um, I would say that they're really positive. I got to like have fun with the other people, which isn't really what you do in the first week of any other class. Um, got to see what solo is going to like be about the whole time, just getting to understand what's really going on. Um, I would definitely say... They have all like shown me things that I need to improve on. Um, things I didn't even know were like there, if that makes any sense. And it's also shown me that everything takes patience and nothing comes automatically. There is hard work and dedication behind like everything that we do in the class. And there's always a reason we do things. So to trust the process and realize that it is shaping us all to become better people. They were all really, really fun. I enjoyed all of them. Like it's weird because when I was little, like we do like winter carnivals and stuff and I would I was the kid that like didn't participate. I was like, I don't want to do this. This does not look fun to me. I don't want to like make a fool of myself. But all these like fun games are like, oh, they're fun. And I don't feel, well, I feel silly, but it's like, it's a fun silly. <laughs> like they're really fun. Um, but not only that, it's like a great learning experience. Like definitely learned a lot more about everyone and just alone and as a group um, and just saw who they really were because all like their true selves came out. Um, I found most of them were within my comfort zone but there were obviously a few of them that I was not so sure about like the Weeping Willow one and also the, um, the one with like, the zipper one. I was a little unsure about those ones but since like, we worked up to them, I found, and like each activity had something new and something else that challenged like me or me and the others, but I knew that everyone else was just kind of there to help me and I was there to help them, so. I think it's pretty amazing that we have a whole semester of this. I know it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's like everybody's going to be the same. And I know no, nobody's going to change, like, like, only better, you know? And I, I'm so excited. I can't believe it, yeah. 
I'm confident for the rest of the year and, you know, excited for new adventures. I'm really excited to see what else we're going to do. Um, it's kind of sad this week is ending and it's like, it's like the beginning, but I know that we're going to do more fun things, so it's exciting to see. I can't wait to continue on with Seoul. Um, just like sad that we won't be like seeing Tony every day anymore, but just very excited about like him being with the college profession professor uh, and stuff. Definitely getting to see him more, having more fun. Yeah. First week's gone great. Yeah. I really think they've decided to not focus on the things that they're not good at and focus on the things that they're good at. And uh, they're really well on their way to making those things happen. We're gonna have a really fun year this year. And uh, I know they're gonna learn a ton about themselves uh, through every, all areas, right? Through you and I, through, uh, through themselves, the material, the locations that they're in. Yeah, so that's gonna be a great year. Every single student in the Seoul crew this semester took on many significant leadership roles. There were so many amazing projects completed that benefited the community, our school, and our classroom. First and foremost, we sold Bella Hill maple syrup to fundraise for our trip to Killarney Park. We made $1,855. Woo! Julia and David took the lead on Eco Schools this year with help from former Seoul student Lyric and they worked very hard to earn our school platinum status, which is the highest that can be achieved. Anna, Liz, and Harry took the lead on making sure the greenhouse would be put to good use this year. They did their research, planted crops, and maintained them for the rest of the semester. Sammy, Samuel, and Liam did a great job managing the school's courtyards, and they also helped to lead the creation of an entirely new beautiful garden near the front of our school. Kanisha, Sarah, and Sasha organized and led an immensely successful school-wide Earth Day event, and they also led a very powerful waterfront cleanup project, where the crew spent a whole day at the waterfront helping to pick up garbage and making sure the waterfront was left more beautiful than ever. Another project that the Soul Crew did was making birdhouses. The Soul class worked with Mr. Cray in a shop class and a few former Soul students to create the birdhouses, and then Seoul students decorated them, and we now have some amazing birdhouses that can be hung up around the school. There's lots of planning that goes in towards getting ready for a backcountry trip, especially when you're going with 15 people. To prepare for our backcountry trips, the Soul Crew did so many things, including learning to tie their knots, learning to read maps, learning how to lift and carry a canoe, getting comfortable carrying the barrels, taking a swim test and learning different paddle strokes, as well as how to rescue a tipped over canoe. And we went on so many amazing hikes around North Bay to see the nature, but also to get ready for the epic climb up Silver Peak. So we started in uh, Magnetowan Lake and took about a two and a half hour drive from North Bay. Uh, a pretty gnarly drive to get to the trailhead uh, to a place called Magnetowan Lake. And from Magnetowan Lake, it was a short paddle to our first portage before we arrived in Hambone where we spent the night and uh, from Hambone uh, we paddled across and we hit a portage that brings us to Ralph Bice and uh, that's a little bit of an up and down with a big mud puddle in the center. Uh, everyone navigated it quite well except for a couple of people lost their crocs in the deeps in the mud which is kind of funny and yes you know who I'm talking about. And uh, then we set off on Ralph Bice and uh, we had a little bit of wind and some adversity and we worked really hard and we dug in and people paddled really well. We got to our, uh, 
to a little cove where we spent the night in Ralph Bice and uh, honk and wind started up shortly after we arrived so our timing was fantastic and it was well predicted and uh, and then after and when we went to bed the uh, uh, things calmed down a little bit now oh, and the barred owl came and uh, followed us to this lake as well to listen to the hoots of the owl at night and uh, then we set off early in the morning and uh, paddled to the end of the lake and uh, we hit our longest portage of the the trip so far for day three and now we're at Little Trout it's a really magical place here and um, yeah so from Little Trout we're uh, going to uh, retrace our steps but we're actually just kind of you know piggybacking off of each other as we work our way back and uh, so this would be the furthest extent and which is kind of fitting really because this is where this group's really found its stride on day three and it's really cool that uh, day three's on trips typically is when people seem to find each other and they feel comfortable and working hard and their systems are down about what to do and when to do them and how to do them so it's been really great I am very glad to be here. I am very glad of how quiet it is and how loud we are. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, I feel very at peace, you know? Um, there's, a, it's like a sanctuary where we are and it's, you know, it's about the journey, not the destination, which is a well said phrase, but <laughs> the whole point of this is that it is the journey and it's about the connections you make with the land and the people. Sad that it's already the third night, <laughs> mm -hmm. but also very happy to be here, and I don't know, I'm just enjoying it <laughs> a lot. I'm very happy that like I have what I need to find success, but like also kind of tired from big paddling. But <laughs> it was fun to be on the water and with everyone. So, um. I feel like I haven't been here for very long. Like we're halfway through the week, but I feel like we're still just kind of getting started. Like we've done a whole lot and like I know like all the work we've done, but it's just it doesn't feel like it's been that long. A lot better knowing how it actually was going to turn out. Tired, but ready, you know, ready for the next day. But I could go for a nap. <laughs> I feel really good. I feel like we've put in a lot of hard work and we're like really kind of bonded together and I feel excited for the days to come and I'm just really thankful for everything that we've done so far. Pretty good. It's fun. I don't really know how to explain it. Like I'm kind of excited to be home but like not at the same time. Like I'm happy being here but also excited to be home. <laughs> I feel at home now in the forest, like at the campsite, I'm way more relaxed and uh, the forest just kind of takes you in and feels like home. So excited, a little tired, had a long day, but I'm happy to be here. Can I say two? Okay, one was actually this afternoon, or no, this morning. This morning when we were just coming onto Little Trout Lake was like uh, when we rafted up and we all had our snack in the sun. That was really nice. <laughs> and then the other one was last night when we watched the sunset on the rock. That was, that was really nice. Favorite moment so far was last night we all sat on the rocks at the campsite and we watched the sunset and it was just this perfect kind of bounce off the lake all lined up um, you know singing and talking it was a very beautiful moment probably the end of the long portage or the end of our paddle today because it felt really good to all arrive somewhere together and not have anyone left behind or kind of struggling to get there it was good because everyone was really happy and just happy that we got here without any complications. <laughs> I'd probably say when I finally got paddling down and I actually could go in a straight line for a little bit, it felt very good and it felt very nice to be on the water. I think uh, last night's watching the sunset at the campsite, we're all just sitting there together and watching the sun go down, it was perfect. <laughs> 
sleeping. Um, no. Uh, probably the portaging, honestly, yeah. Honestly, just spending this time with you guys, like, everything's fun. I, maybe the tent, but like, other than that, <laughs> I've, I've enjoyed all of the trip. I can't pick a favorite. Well, there are a lot of ones. There's so many happy moments, like, every day, all the time with everybody, just because it's such a great group. Um, but uh, doing this interview right now, those guys making me laugh was a highlight. Um, definitely watching the sunset with everybody yesterday night on the rock, I think, was overwhelmingly the best. And also when we wrapped up and had that canoe snack today in the sun, it's much needed. There's two, there's one with the group, and it was last night at the sunset. I think just being together and experiencing something that we see like every single night kind of apart and to actually being all together at once and experiencing it, knowing that we've come so far to just sit down in that moment. And the other time was probably when I found like sitting by myself and just I think appreciating everything that everyone has done, not just me, to be where we are. See, here we are in the 10th year of Seoul and uh, we're on Little Trout Lake. We're three days in uh, in Algonquin Park in the deeps of it. I'm sure you'll see some black flies flying around, but they haven't been too bad. Uh, we've had uh, some colder nights and we've had some windy days and we've had lots of sunshine, but ultimately it's been just a really wonderful experience watching uh, students gather and working through uh, some of the adversities that they're faced as it relates to the outdoors, but always seeking the wonderment in each other and in the natural environment in which they've surrounded themselves with. Because it really is a beautiful place here and they've come to uh, not only learn a lot about themselves and each other, but uh, really about the magical place that, uh, that's in their backyard. So it's just so awesome that we can all be together and, and, uh, and enjoy uh, as, uh, as often as we can each day. It's fun watching uh, uh, each person grow and develop in their own ways as they've, uh, even since the beginning of this trip a few days ago. And uh, some people have really had to dig deep and, and have a look, you know, far within themselves and to pull out all their courage that they have inside to be able to even get to this point because uh, it's not easy, right? You know, f perhaps for some people become a little bit more natural than others, but on a whole, people have worked really hard to be able to get here. And, uh, and I'm just thankful for, uh, for those things. Soul Crew 2022, 10 year anniversary of Soul. Couldn't ask for a better group of people to be paddling with. I'm so very proud of all of their accomplishments that they've made and this is really great that we're on our final trip together here in Clarney Park. Beautiful sunny day today as we're about to cross David Lake and tomorrow summit up uh, Silver Peak. So it's just been absolutely wonderful and I couldn't be happier with the group of people, not just in this boat but all the boats here and the fact that everyone has grown into themselves and been so authentic with each other ensuring and realizing their own potential in their own ways. There's really nothing more that could be asked. And I just feel so, so lucky. Um, I, in fact, blessed to be around this crew. They uh, have taught me so much about myself as they teach each other and uh, follow the guidance of the program as well. It's just, uh, just really great. Really great to be around them. Really great to be with them. It's pretty awesome. It's so wonderful to have everyone uh, out and about as we work our way up the top of Silver Peak over my shoulders. And we're just on the first ridge working our way. We've got a valley to work our way down into and then we work our way up Silver Peak. But boy oh boy, what a great crew we have this year. Have a look. <laughs> you made it! Woo! <laughs> Woo! 
the feeling is like I came a long way. Like, like I became a better person, but by a lot because like every single day we do something like that, I feel like a better person. So when I'm actually at the end and I look back, I like really changed a lot. I think I've been, it's been a fun challenge and like I've enjoyed all of it. Um, it's been a good learning experience. And I think like, I used to go camping a lot, but not like this. So it was like cool to experience the more raw aspect of camping. I would say with all of the effort that everyone has put in and I've put in, it feels very rewarding because you've just learned how to push yourself mentally in difficult situations and learn that it's not always easy to succeed, but it's worth trying and that even in moments of failure, there's reasons to keep going and push yourself because those moments, like when we are all sitting on the last night at the end of the trip, it's a moment where you're like, this is my family. Or when we got to Silver Peak and it was like, we just climbed a mountain. Like, who can say that, right? It's, and it can feel a little bit hard sometimes, but the feeling that you receive once accomplishing it is something uncomparable and worth every single piece of hardship that there is. It definitely feels really, really good. And I'm also very proud of the things that not only like me, but also the rest of the group have done. Silver Peak was like kind of a realization of all of that for sure. It felt really cool. I feel like I've balanced my life a lot more. There's a difference between having everything happen at once in a short period of time and having everything happen but being ready for it. You know, Dubray was explaining to me uh, earlier today about um, there's two types of canoe tripping and you can either relax and enjoy it or you can kind of push through it and everything can be hectic. And I feel like I've really found that balance between wanting to educate myself in school but also wanting to learn more about the backcountry. I think it's really helped me to grow because there's such an incredible support system for me to fall back into. They're very encouraging. They all have the same views about failure. They'll just encourage you. You don't feel like you have to feel bad if you do something wrong. Instead, they're kind of there to just pull you back up. And so that kind of increases my confidence and just my ability to be myself and not really have to worry so much. I've actually noticed this a lot, even since the beginning, that everyone is so openly themselves and I have learned so much from every single person here. Like David will do something one day and I'll be like, I need to start being more like that. Or Kanisha, she's always so like comforting and making sure everyone's okay. And I notice that I start grasping onto these like things that I envy from everyone, that I've learned about them from being so close with them. And I start implementing them in my life because then I can start becoming a better person as well. And it's like little pieces of every single person is like put together to help me grow and like learn things and adapt. Honestly, like before this, I had like a few friends, but you know, we're never as close as this, because this like thick and thin, you know, you look greasy all the time. And so it's like, it's made me like care less what others think of me because like I've realized I don't care. I'll find the people that like me for me. So it's had a great impact on me. I think a strong group bond helped a lot with like being able to help each other and like actually like learning because I can just really go up to anyone and ask for help and they'll be like, yeah, absolutely. I found that it's helped me open up and be myself. Mm -hmm. Having a strong group bond, with, it just makes me feel like I'm not being judged. 
that so that not feeling judged will just make me get out of my comfort zone a lot more and just experience everything just so much better than I would mm -hmm. if I didn't have that bond. I would say I'm definitely a lot more confident, like I was saying before, because of this support system. Um, and just everything we learn helps me to just kind of be myself. And everyone's kind of struggling with the same things in a way and helping each other come out of that a more confident person. And we're doing a lot of things to help push ourselves. And so that just makes me step outside our comfort zone, obviously. So we grow more confidence. And personal leadership wise, I think we learn a lot of tips and tricks to help us be able to regulate ourselves, be able to stay focused, do what needs to do, do what we need to do, <laughs> shift gears kinda, and just, you know, be able to be ourselves so we can have that personal leadership that we need. I have changed a lot. I have become more out there, more confident, more like talkative. And before I was definitely the shy kid sitting in the back of the corner, so. <laughs> I definitely feel a lot more confident in myself and more comfortable around other people and being like just whatever around other people, like not worrying about what other people think. It's been a big difference if you were to look four months ago to now, for I'm sure everyone. Four months ago, I was not very confident. I didn't really, I didn't really want to talk to people. Really, I was very kept to myself. I like had a couple friends that I was close with, but I don't know, I think I've just really like opened up and it it's really it's really awesome that I can be close to like so many people and and it's really helped me like with my confidence and with leadership because especially around them I feel like I can I can kind of like come out either if it's like silly or if I'm being serious and like they'll be there to help me. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've definitely got more confident. Stepped outside my comfort zone. And that helped. I feel like there's a lot of good leadership strategies that I learned along watching from Tony and Mr. Dubray. And personal confidence, I feel like just, I can do it now. I'm not afraid to lead things anymore. Like I feel like if we have done like a trip like this on the first like week of Seoul, I wouldn't have wanted to lead anything. I wouldn't have like stepped up to do the water, like step up to do things. But now I'm like, oh, like I'm confident that I can do these things and that like I can help my friends and not be like scared to use my voice to say things and stuff. And it's just kind of like I'm talking to them at this point. I like it. Before, I used to think of failure as like, yep, I failed, that's it, I'm done. Like, I can't do anything about it, I failed. But now it's like, oh, I failed. Well, let me try again, see if I can fix what I did wrong. And even like a couple days ago, I dropped the water bag. And I was like, oh, crap. But then I went back and I got water and fixed it. And it took a lot longer than it should have, but it still, I fixed my mistake and didn't like make a big deal about it. I just kind of was like, oh, I failed. Like, let's move on. I think uh, through the program, failures has like, all the failures that I've had have like made me a lot better. And I really appreciate like how encouraging um, everyone is and Mr. Dubroy is because it's like, like we're encouraged to fail, to learn. Um, and I just feel like it's okay to fail now. And it always makes me a better person because of it. It's not the end of the world. It's like, it's a learning experience. It's a learning curve. Uh, you get back up from it. Mm -hmm. it. 
makes you grow as a person. I kind of like the idea of failure. It's uh, because it it really just it helps you grow because if you like, and I don't find it like I don't find it like a negative thing anymore. I used to think like, oh, like I need to do everything perfectly, and if I do something wrong, then it's bad, and like something bad will happen. But now it's like maybe something bad will happen, but I'll like learn from the experience and. Failure is just not so bad. Failure is always perceived as something to do wrong. And I feel like I've learned, I know it's like a really common saying about like, oh, failure means you can only go up from there. But it's truly that. I have had ups and downs of this semester. I know it. Everyone knows it. We all have, right? But that doesn't mean I didn't learn and... and know how to do better from it so failure now is not I did this wrong failure is you know I'm learning and it's just progress along the way Uh, I just think that the team for this year and what surrounded uh, Seoul is such top flight Um, we have uh, um, the owner operator of a uh, outdoor first aid company who doesn't send her employees, but she actually comes herself because she loves working with Seoul students to um, <clears throat> Jill Pico, who uh, had, was on the first trip and, uh, and she also came in and ran uh, tutorials and, uh, and did uh, book and essay discussion uh, discussions with the class and really challenge them um, uh, to look at academia um, in profound ways. And thank you so much, Chloe, for being a part of things and sharing your many gifts with the class and the things that you learned many moons ago when you were in Seoul. And to be able to share that with students and also give them. Uh, lots of reasons to do great things in their own lives and time. You really are a role model in so many ways. So wonderful to have you on trip. Very thankful for that. I would like to thank uh, Tori Fisher uh, from the bottom of my heart because he has brought uh, great kindness and wisdom that he has shared about him and his family and otherwise and uh, he does so, so freely, and um, we're also very thankful for him. I'd really like to thank uh, Jordan Mowat for being such an inspiration for our class, and uh, he's the impetus and the reason for Thrive, the song, and also sharing his wisdom, too, around that and his teaching. It's so wonderful to have him uh, a part of the program to share his kindness and his gifts with us so freely. I'd also really like to thank uh, Mr. Crea, wonderful man. Thank you so much for sharing your talents and your time and energy, working with former soul students and current soul students and providing uh, the ways in which we can uh, create and co-create together. It really is the spirit of things. Um, Such a gentle man, such a caring man. I feel so lucky to be able to work with them. Um, and uh, to provide uh, guidance for really great projects to make a difference within their lives, the school and community at large. Just wonderful. And uh, working with Tony from Leaders of the Day, who is uh, so incredible to work with. He brings uh, such passion and joy for what he does and his outdoor education facilitation is top flight. It's it's incredible that he has the time to spend with us always every year with all the dynamic incredible things that he's constantly doing uh, not just in our area of the world but across Canada. So to have someone who is of such high caliber and really who is such a role model for everyone to be around is mind-blowing. But I purposely left, left you to last, Abby. It was what you brought to uh, the classroom and why you're called Mama G. (laughs) What a beautiful nickname. Uh, Is that uh, uh, 
you inspired them on the daily. They were just so encouraged by all the things that you were doing and how dynamic you were, how bright you are, uh, how kind you are, how loving you are. And it just wouldn't have been the same without you this year. I just feel so, uh, so blessed to have had you and to work literally side by side. I feel blessed to be here. Yeah, that we, uh, we, we did this together. And uh, uh, I can't wait to see the incredible things that are in store for you and for us to work together on Thrive Together and some of the other endeavors because your talent is immense and you have so much going for you. And I'm so excited to see where things go. Uh, from all of us, biggest thank you. So good things come in tens, isn't that what they say? So, so excited to be part of the, the crew this year. Um, it was one of those years where from the very beginning, people came together. And as we stand at the end, as we so often do, we're reminded of how much has taken place since the beginning. And I think yesterday, we're on the heels of a remarkable trip up onto Silver Peak. Uh, and uh, as we got up there and stood in the sunshine and the wind blew on us, and people stood on the threshold of the mountain, I think people's minds started to travel to uh, being on the threshold of this experience. And, you know, for some, that was an emotional moment where people started to think about endings and we began to remind people that really it's a beginning and as we kind of move through those transitions in our lives because they happen all the time we become more aware of how to navigate those in a really great way and to celebrate the things that have been and certainly to feel the emotion of those things but also to bring those kind of feelings to uh, into service as opposed to things that hold us back or uh, cripple our forward momentum. So parents, as you're sitting there today, you should be super proud of your kids. It was really my great pleasure to spend time with them this, uh, this semester. It was a semester where I got to spend more time with them even than usual. And so we formed some really deep bonds and shared some incredible stories and had some really amazing adventures together. And so I am so happy to carry those memories forward with me in this, our 10th kind of special year together. So, um, and to Mr. Dubroy, my friend Terry. Brother, what an amazing, amazing year. And it's been such an incredible ride to kind of share this experience with you. I'm always, very honored to be able to kind of do this partnered work with you and I want to bring to the forefront your incredible championship of this program and I think that while some understand what it is that you kind of invest and sacrifice and fight for to keep this program alive and vital and breathing I think many don't quite understand what's required to make that magic happen. And so I want to celebrate you in our 10th year and look forward to, you know, a decade more of incredible experiences that are still yet to come. So as we sit here kind of at the feet of the mountain, uh, I hope that this message speeds you on your way. I hope it paves an incredible piece of momentum forward like our boat speeding through the waves and I know that we'll meet again. Tony, you're uh, more than just a colleague in outdoor education. You're a really, really important person in my life. A really, really good friend of mine, like a brother. Um, the, the way in which we've had a chance to work together in working and creating incredible
incredible opportunities for students to be as authentic as possible in as many different ways to inspire and to co-create together has just been amazing. And I am so thankful for that and the experiences that we've shared together from the top of Silver Peak uh, and the mega kilometers we've logged together in a canoe. The incredible conversations that we've had, but more importantly, how can we make the place in which people live better? And that's truly inspiring because that's what we both live for. So thank you, brother, for all that you are and all that you do. Um, lots of students really had to, really had to dig deep. Um, in many respects, uh, some that wasn't too bad. Others, it was like a really big go, you know. Um, Silver Peak is uh, a beautiful experience to finish the year off because of the vistas in which they can see things and the energy that was around that group was so incredible and I wish every parent had a chance to see that. Working together after hours of hard work to get to the top of the second highest peak but the only mountain range in Ontario, the La Cloche Mountains, and to stand there together and uh, to, to look out at Georgian Bay and to look at uh, the La Cloche Mountains and to just see the look in their eyes of accomplishment uh, after an incredible semester together. Um, sure you're gonna miss them. That loving energy they had for each other and the, the strength to do the things that they did and the courage that they had to really work hard at themselves. And that's just not academics, this is life stuff. I just wish it could be taught more in school and I wish other people could have what this whole crew had. I really think that when a student comes into Seoul, it is super important for them to look for ways they can grow and to actively search that out because what you are willing to put into the world, the world is willing to give that back to you. And I really do think every single student this year has been able to exemplify that and really fully grab onto that concept and it has allowed them to grow and excel at so much more than what they ever thought they could have. And I am so proud of every single one of them. So I'm going to have everyone choose a word that they would use to describe this experience. And I think the word that I would choose is inspiring. This time with everyone in and out of the soul class, um, going on trips, recording stuff for this documentary. Um, all of it has just been so inspiring, especially to see um, from the start of this program to now, the growth and the change that everyone has made and the progress and the successes and the failure and everything that we've worked to together, it's insanely inspiring. Change, because I think my experience, I have like, I've changed my mindset, I've changed like my perspective on things, changed to think more positive about certain situations, like failure, like everything about my outlook on everything and like all the experience I've had is just like changed and I've learned to really like it. Really like the idea of change. Adventure. It's like a whole adventure from start to finish and once you get to the end you realize um, everything you did but in the, when you're in the middle of it you don't really know what's going to come up. Family. <laughs> Growth. It took me a moment to understand why I wanted to choose this word because I've 
I've grown, we've grown, and everything around us is constantly moving. So we have to keep up with it and we have to understand and go, okay, I need to learn and I need to understand more. And I feel like I've grown emotionally and even physically as well, right? With all of this hard work. And I'll never not grow with these people around me. Learning. X factor. <laughs> Well, Tony and I had a conversation about it because it's one of my words for walking the high road. And he kind of explained it as like the magical ingredient to something. And soul is like the magical ingredient to living like a really happy, like fun high school year. Refreshing. It's kind of like a breath of fresh air because the courses are different, the classes are different. It's kind of like a and still there's stressful moments, but it's an ability to learn in a different way that's refreshing. And I meet all of these new people and I have these close bonds and it's really refreshing to be genuine and close with so many people and being out in nature as opposed to being in a classroom right now. Like this is, this is crazy. It's really refreshing. It's like, I'm out here I feel healthy, I feel happy, and it's like, it's refreshing. Yeah, uplifting. Um, a word I would use to describe soul to kind of incorporate everything would be achievements. Because throughout the entire period of soul, whether it was the beginning or where we are now, it's all because of small successes and achievements that we've kind of done together or by ourselves to bring us closer together and create a foundation that all of us can become more family-like. And all of these achievements have brought us to where we are today, like the achievements of paddling a lake or the achievement of getting an assignment in on time. They're just all things that contribute to the success of the classroom and create the bond that we have with each other. Fulfilling. I think I use the word fulfilling because the, the, way, the ways to live that we learn through this program, um, they, I feel like they're teaching me how to find fulfillment and be fulfilled in my life. It's a great feeling. The word I would share is wonder. So I think this year more than any, people just have an incredible desire to get acquainted with both the things we know out here to kind of uh, make our daily life and also just the beautiful things that are around us. And so I really enjoyed being able to share that in a really kind of uh, honest and authentic way this year. Yeah, well, perhaps I will go strength then, yeah because they had the strength to, per, to, to see, see themselves in a new way, right? Just like the model of the program, change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And all things begin with themselves and they move from inside to outside. And that's where everything is, to be able to take all those great thoughts and feelings that you have, to feel good about sharing your gift with the world. And all of the students and soul have immense gifts to share with the rest of the world and I can't I can't wait to see where they all go there's no right or wrong when you step outside your comfort zone put your foot down no matter what is on the ground don't get stuck in the past Live these moments like your last Give yourself a chance And hold your stance in order to progress And bring success, find where you thrive Keep your spirit alive Just follow your path It may take time So
shine the stars and the night Give yourself a chance And hold your stance in order to progress And bring success find where you thrive Keep your spirit alive Just follow your path It may take time But in the end it will be fine As long as you thrive We may go our separate ways But some things will never change 